Let's get the book. start over or do you want to continue from where we left off? Where we left off. Okay. I'll take it. I turn the page back as a bookmark, correct? Sure. <laughs> You're so big. You're so big. You're so big. You're so big. Uh oh, it's a book. I got it. This is Henry Heckledeck. Heckleback gets a Henry, dragon. Henry gets a dragon. Henry Heckleback gets a dragon. <laughs> Chapter 4. Three things. The first day of school zoomed by. Henry and Dudley counted coins in math. In science, they, dro they dropped things in water to see what would float and what would sink to the bottom. They had chicken nuggets and rainbow yogurt sticks for lunch. Then they played tag at recess. I love school, Henry said on the school, on the bus back home. Me too, Dudley agreed. I'm not sure that new girl liked it. Henry nodded. Hmm, Max didn't have a partner in math, he said. She ate lunch all by herself, Dudley added. Then at recess, she just watched everyone, Henry said as he made a note of all these things. Maybe the new girl wished Miss Mizzle was a homework robot, Dudley said. Henry laughed. Maybe, he said. We'll find out more about Max when she does her All About Me project. The ride back went by fast, and soon, as the, bus, soon the bus was at Henry's stop. Henry waved goodbye to Dudley. Then he ran all the way home and went straight to his room. Henry held his all-about-me bag and looked around. Hmm, he thought. What three things best describe me? He found his magnifying glass on the carpet. Well, first of all, I'm a secret spy, he said, and plopped the magnifying glass into the paper bag. <clears throat> Henry, hey, I also love soccer. Henry grabbed his goalie gloves from a drawer in his dresser. Now I just need one more thing. Henry hunted through his toy chest. There were, there were stuffed animals, but nothing seemed right. Then he turned to his bookshelf. On the very top, he spied a mini remote-controlled dragon. That's it, he cried. The toy dragon would be perfect. It had eyes that lit up. It could also roll its head, roar, and fly in a circle. I wonder how it got way up there, Henry thought. The dragon was leaning against an old book, a book that had been sitting on his shelf forever. Henry had to find a way to get to his dragon and get it down. Henry dragged a chair over and climbed onto it. The toy dragon was still too high. Oh, this is chapter five, the weird old book. He put one foot on the shelf and reached for the dragon. Does that look safe? No. He could barely poke the toy with his fingertips. And that's when his door opened. Henry, shouted his sister, get down. Henry lost his balance and rolled onto the carpet like an action hero. Things from the bookshelf tumbled down. The old book landed in front of him. Henry, you could have gotten hurt, Heidi cried. Henry rubbed his head and smiled. I was fine until you scared me, he said. I'm serious, Heidi went on. The bookshelf could have fallen on you. Henry had never thought of that. You better pick up the things before Mom gets home, Heidi added. Then she marched out of the room and shut the door behind her. Henry pulled his dragon out of the mess. Luckily, nothing was broken. Suddenly, a hum sounded in the room. It was coming from the old book on the floor. Henry touched the book, and it began to glow. Whoa, whispered Henry. Chapter 6, The Dragon Spell. 
Henry opened the glowing book. Something hard landed in his lap with a, with a clunk. It looked like his gold soccer medal. It had the letter M on it. Henry put the medal around his neck. Suddenly the pages of the book were turning on their own. Finally, they stopped on a picture of a dragon. Cool, Henry exclaimed. Then the page turned and a voice from nowhere read the book out loud. How to get a dragon? Have you ever wanted your very own pet dragon? A dragon that would follow you to school? Or one that would play with you and sleep on the bed, on the bed at night? If you really want a dragon, then this is the spell for you. Ingredients. One, a picture of your favorite dragon. Two, a tablespoon of hot sauce. Three, one cup of water. Four, two tablespoons of baking soda. Mix the ingredients in a bowl. Hold your medallion in one hand and place your other hand over the bowl. Chant the following spell. Dragon soar and dragon dive. Make my dragon come alive. What does that mean? Oh, it's just somebody hoping that his dragon, that's a toy, turns into a real dragon. Magic. It was magic. Henry could not believe it. He got the ingredients faster than a dragon could breathe fire. Then he mixed them together took off the medallion and held it, oh, held it while he chanted the spell. There was a puff of smoke and Henry looked around his room. It should have been easy to find a real live dragon, but Henry could not see one anywhere. It didn't work, Henry thought. Maybe it's just, I'm just a normal kid after all. He put the medallion back inside the book. Henry picked up his toy dragon and said, You're still great, even if you aren't real. He put the toy into his bag and started cleaning his room. Chapter 7, Fire Breathing Freak Out The next morning, Henry's bag felt heavier than it had felt the night before. That's odd, Henry thought. He peeked inside, magnifying glass. Check. Goalie gloves. Check. Dragon toy. Check. Nothing had changed. When the bus came, Henry sat next to Dudley. What's in your all about me bag? Henry asked. Dudley smiled. He pulled out a stinky soccer cleat. Next, he pulled out a pack of sour candy. Dudley loved sour candy. And lastly, he held up his light up yo-yo. Those are great, Henry said. Okay, so what did you bring? Dudley asked. Henry opened the bag. The magnifying glass and the goalie gloves were there, but the dragon was missing. Oh no, Henry cried. My dragon is gone. There was a hole in the bottom of the bag, only it wasn't just any hole. The bag had been scorched. Scorched means fire burned it. Chapter 8, Spy vs. Spy. Don't worry, I'll help you find your toy dragon, Dudley said. It's not like it ran away. The bus parked at school and the boys waited for everyone to leave. Dudley checked the front of the bus. Henry crawled toward the back. There, he spied his very real dragon. He, he dove for it, but the dragon was fast. It flew out an open window. Henry tried the remote control, but it did not work. Wow, Dudley cried. I didn't know you could fly like that. Neither did I, Henry admitted as he raced off the bus. As Henry chased the toy, he ran smack into Max. She dropped her all about me bag and something rolled out. It was a magnifying glass, just like his. Max grabbed it and, showed the and shoved it back into her bag. Watch out. Watch where you're going, she said. You should be more careful, too, he said. 
but Max was already gone. Chapter 9, The What Ifs. Henry couldn't decide which was worse, missing one of his All About Me items or having his real magic dragon loose in the classroom. He squirmed in his chair. What if the dragon lands in Mrs. Missile's hair? What if the dragon tries to eat all, all the kids' snacks? Or what if the dragon burns down the whole classroom? Then Dudley nudged Henry's foot and said, Somebody's staring at you. Somebody was staring at him, but it wasn't a dragon. It was Max. She pointed behind Henry. He turned around. The toy, tiny toy dragon sat on top of his cubby. Henry carefully raised his hand. He did not want to scare the dragon away, but also did not want the class to see the dragon. Mrs. Mizzle, may I please get something from the backpack? His teacher nodded. Henry walked to his, to his backpack with his best there's no dragon on top of me, Cubby Walk. With every step Henry took, the little dragon tilted its head and flashed its eyes playfully. With a gulp, Henry reached for the dragon, but it flew away and Henry fell into the wall of cubbies. Backpacks, jackets, and snacks tumbled to the floor. The whole class laughed, at least almost the whole class. One student did not laugh at all. Max, she had seen Henry's very real dragon escape out the window. Chapter 10, It's Only a Toy. The day moved slowly. All Henry could think about was finding the dragon. Even after the cubby mess, and don't take your notes, please. Henry kept looking, but he didn't see anything. Luckily, Henry made it to races without being called on to share his All About Me bag. He slipped on his soccer gloves and grabbed his trusty magnifying glass. It was time to find a dragon. He tiptoed across the swing set and many monkey bars. There was, then he spied the dragon paw prints. He followed the rock tracks. They led to an old oak tree. Suddenly the dragon peeked from behind the branches. It looked scared. Henry gave a little wave and the dragon flew down to him. He quickly cupped his hands around the dragon when it landed. He felt the small wings beat against her, his soccer gloves. He looked at the dragon for the last time up close. You are so cute, he said to the dragon, but I don't think Brewster Elementary is the best place for dragons. The dragon's eyes flashed in agreement. It was listening to him. Henry took a deep breath and said, I wish you were a toy dragon too. Kazing! A small glow light a small glow, like the one from the book, surrounded the dragon. It instantly turned back into a toy. Wow, Henry said out loud, just as someone tapped him on the shoulder. It was Max. You better tell me what's going on, she said. Henry was nervous. Henry was nervous. Had Max seen anything? Stop that, please. What do you mean, he asked. Max pointed to the dragon. I saw that thing fly, she said. Henry took off his gloves and pulled out the remote control. It does fly, he said, but it's only a toy. Then he made the dragon fly in a circle. See, by the way, I'm Henry Heckelbeck, private eye and sniper spy. I've noticed that you're a detective too. He showed her his annoying magnifying glass. Max reached into her All About Me bag and showed Henry her magnifying glass, too. Something, maybe we can solve a murder mystery together sometime, Henry suggested.
A half smile spread across Max's face. Maybe, she said as the bell rang. Because there is definitely something weird going on at school. Henry knew Max was right. There was something weird getting, getting on here. And Henry Heckelbeck was the one case. Is it done? It's over. Mm, one more page. No, this one doesn't have the race car counts. It's one done. That's the next story. Oh, maybe not. Max sat down. Do you play? She asked. Dudley's mouth fell open. Well, of course I play, he said. And for your information, I am a I am a center back. My position tries to stop the outer team from... Max held up her hand like a stop sign. I know, I know, she said. You tried to stop the opposite team from scoring. 